Hello and welcome to the special edition of Greater Somerville. I'm Joe Lynch. My guest today is John Dalton, the general manager of the MBTA Green Line Rapid Transit System Extension Project. The Green Line Extension Project consists of a relocated Leachmere Station in Cambridge and six additional stops in Somerville and Medford. Also slated is a new storage and maintenance facility. The project has an estimated cost of $2.3 billion. John Dalton is a Navy veteran, a former general manager for project construction with the Chicago Transit Authority, and has worked extensively on large-scale public transportation projects, both in the U.S. and overseas. The Boston Globe reported yesterday that the federal government gave its blessing to the revised plan and cost estimates. It is my pleasure to welcome to Greater Somerville, John Dalton. Thank you, Joe. We're gonna open up with a very obvious question, John. How does it feel to be the most loved person <laughs> in Somerville today? Well, that's, 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 that's generous and I appreciate it. Um, it's been a great day for, for the MBTA, for the GLX, and what's really important is that it's been a great day for the future riders of the Green Line Extension in Somerville, Cambridge, and Medford. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> Those are the end users, the real beneficiaries of where we're going to go, and uh, it's a great day for us all collectively. John, you know, uh, we're going to do a little bit of, um, you know, past history stuff on another program to kind of bring the, the uh, newcomers to the Green Line up to speed. But I think many of the viewers in uh, Cambridge, Somerville, and Medford, and beyond, folks who are going to be using the transit system, will want to know what are the next steps moving forward. So if you could take a, a, take a minute or so and explain the funding that was approved, what that now entails, and where you think we're gonna be going in the next maybe three, six, one year out. Sure. So the Greenlight Extension, or, or, or GLX, um, reached a major milestone yesterday with the FTA's approval of our estimated cost schedule and, and our scope delivery plans. Um, that was a result of a, of a lengthy process <clears throat> where it was a matter of working with the, the FTA as well as my in-house team uh, to review the plans. Um, we spent a couple of days at the end of January doing a really thorough review of the cost estimating, the scheduling assumptions, and the ultimate work product of the GLX, um, where the FTA came back and said they concurred with our, our estimates for cost and schedule, which was you know great news. It was a conclusion that we internally felt confident about before, but having an outside party, a third, a third, a third party review it and, and agree with our estimates was, was really reassuring. So <clears throat> with that, uh, we are one step closer to um, the funds being released for the Green Line Extension Program. Um, we are currently finalizing our finance plan, which outlines how, how, how we, the MBTA, and uh, the Commonwealth will deliver our part of the contract for funding. Yeah, it should be said, John, there are two parts to the, how the funding is right. going to happen. Right, right. Um, the, the overall program budget is $2.3 billion. Um, the federal government um, is committed to approximately $1 billion, a little bit less, but effectively uh, that's what it will be. And the rest is, is provided by um, the Commonwealth and some additional contributing elements that are very Somerville important. and Cambridge being two municipalities who ponied up some money. Exactly. Somerville yep. and Cambridge definitely contributed to that, and uh, the Boston MPO was, was also a contributing factor. Um, <clears throat> so the next step is for us to finish our financing plan, which again speaks to the non-federal element of the, of the GLX funding piece. Uh, submit that to the FTA. Um, the FTA will review it. And then um, once that review is complete, um, we will be you know, right, right on the verge of, of drawing down those funds. So the question that, John, the question I get a lot is, you know, in, in the city of Somerville, city of Cambridge, city of Medford, we've heard that before. You know, there's been multiple announcements about how the funding is going to happen. The uh, Secretary Pollack, you know, much to her credit, because this thing did balloon way out of, way out of proportion over the last couple of years, Secretary Pollock basically said, you know, I'm hitting the brakes on this thing. We're going to go back in and we're going to review. So what you're describing now is the revised project. That revised project took out 
um, for lack of a better term, don't react to this. This is my term. When I saw the original design plans for some of the stations, they actually looked like Taj Mahal or mausoleum type of things. I said, I, I, this isn't what I was envisioning. <clears throat> there were also a lot of add-ons, and that ballooned that cost way up. So you were brought in after Secretary Pollock basically said, let's stop this process. It's out of control at three plus billion dollars. That's not what the federal government is going to help us build. You were brought in late last year in November. So the revised project is now what you're describing. That $2.3 billion is kind of the pared down station designs. Some bridge work may not be complete reconstruction of bridges. Um, the uh, community path will now stop at a certain point rather than go all the way into Boston. The procurement of how you send those out for bid, the, the um, design build yep. part of it. Yep. Am I getting all this right? Exactly right. There you go. Yeah. So I study this stuff. Clearly, okay. clearly. Now, well, you know, the city of Somerville and the city of Cambridge and the city of Medford have been terrific in terms of keeping everything in front of the residents and the businesses to make sure they know it's going to happen. But I want to make sure that people who are going to be watching this interview understand this is the revised plan. These are the numbers, 2.3 billion. You're going to be held accountable to stay within that budget. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that's what I'm here for. Um, so the, the contract we have with the federal government, the part that, you know, we are obliged to fulfill to receive the funds is, is defined by a full funding grant agreement, an FFGA, which is for, for projects of this scale and size is kind of the standard vehicle that which the FTA um, enters into financial and contractual agreements with owners, with, with agencies like ourselves, right. the MBTA. <clears throat> the FFGA outlines very clearly what must be delivered at the end of the GLX. Um, it talks about cost, it talks about schedule and scope. Um, one thing that this redesign effort did and held this up right in the middle and very clearly and Secretary Pollack made this clear to us was, you know, priority one is fulfilling the obligations of the FFGA. Right. So whatever you do, whatever you look at must satisfy these obligations. So with that direction, um, took a very hard look, made some hard decisions based on what had been, you know, published previously and looked at closely pr previous to, to the kind of the stop of the project. And, uh, you know, started that as the guiding principle. You know, look at it closely, but don't go against what was defined in the sure. FGA. Yep. So yeah, so what you see now, what's, what's being currently reviewed by the design build teams that are, you know, pursuing this project is a revised design that <clears throat> A, satisfies the FFGA obligations um, in the context of scope, but also cost and, and schedule. Terrific. Let's talk a little bit, John, about what you think. I know it's not all cast in, in stone at this yeah. point, but what you think um, construction schedule possibly could look out. And I know you still have to do a lot of bidding process and right. get the contractors, but you know, we here in the municipality saw some of the bridge work, some of the redesign had started already. Mm -hmm. The Ball Square Bridge, the Medford, Medford Street Bridge. When can we expect to see that type of activity resume? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so right now we are on the front end of the design build procurement process. <clears throat> what that means is we have identified three uh, qualified design build teams, shortlisted those teams, and, and those three teams are now just kind of getting into the design plans and contract requirements that they will be, that the winner will be <clears throat> ultimately required to, to fulfill. So. Um, and this process, because it's design build and because we've really tried to maximize all the benefits of design build delivery, the process for procurement takes some time because um, it really allows us to get feedback from the design build teams, you know, here where they think there might be some opportunities for efficiencies, um, some, you know, scope considerations that a, would still comply with the FFGA, but might be considered slightly different from what the design build documents assumed. Because these guys have a specialty. And this is what they, this, this this is they, what they do. They may be able to assist you in That's right. This is what, this is what they do. Um, they are, you know, they are literally the boots on the ground, ultimately. And, uh, you know, we have firms who have done this 
certainly around the country and in some cases around the world. So, you know, we put together what, what we ultimately want and they will tell us the optimal way to get it done. Mm -hmm. And considering that's all being kind of procured in a competitive environment, they will do it in such a way that they will be um, incentivized to do it in the most cost efficient way, which ultimately is the benefit of the, of the program. But Joe, to answer your question, this procurement process runs through the fall, um, <clears throat> where by you know, September into kind of through the end of the year, we'll be evaluating the final proposals from these three teams, mm -hmm. and then hoping uh, February, uh, this time you know, a little less than a year from now, selecting and awarding the winning contract to the mm -hmm. winning design build team. So you would ask, when will construction start? Because it's design build, a lot of the front end work is design only. Mm -hmm. So we'll give a green light to the winning design build team uh, when that happens. <clears throat> and then there's a fair amount of design work that goes on before you start seeing shovels in the ground. Design and, and then review by you folks. Design, yeah. review, and then the work starts. The beauty of design build though is you don't have to wait until design's completed before the build part can start. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, we do design bid build where you have one, one, one entity does design zero to 100%. You have a complete set of drawings that you want to give to someone to ultimately go build. So you get that drawing package, <clears throat> then you go procure the contractor, um, and then you hand off the, that drawing package from the design team to the contractor and say, okay, go. The beauty of design build is you, there's an overlap. <clears throat> so instead of having two separate distinct teams with two distinct steps, design build allows you to have one team where you know, design starts. Once you get some of that preliminary design work done, you can start working on that while the rest of the design runs its course. But that part of it, John, does not preclude some of the utilities that will have to come in and start doing their own thing. That's right. I think that's what we were seeing here in Somerville. The <clears throat> utilities that are under bridges yeah. have to be moved out of the yep. way. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff we're going to start seeing again. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, a lot of the work, part of the beauty of design build is that certain things in the design build documents are um, prescriptive mm -hmm. in that they're very clear. You must put a station in this area that has a platform this length. You must have meet, achieve lighting criteria that satisfies these requirements. ADA requirements, all the rest of it. All that, yep. safety, security, all that stuff. Thank so you. there's a lot of parts of the utility work that are going to be subject to change based upon the ultimate final design. Right. We've put together a concept design. The final design we won't know until the design build team is here and submits the final design to us. Okay. So there's a lot of pieces of the, of the scope, particularly with the utilities, um, even some of the real estate acquisitions that it'd be premature for us to move on or act on where they may not be necessary based on the ultimate design. So um, we are you know, trying to get ahead of all the things that must be done, like the utilities that are clearly have to be done sure. regardless of what the contract design build team wants to change. We're, we're getting on those now, getting them out of the way. But the ones that are subject to change, we're going to let that wait. How about some um, updates for the general community? I mean, that's what I've been asked over the last 24 hours since the announcement was made is, when are they coming back in to kind of update us? You know, hopefully this will satisfy some folks here in Somerville who are going to see this interview, but when would the uh, MBTA and the design, you being the general manager for this extension project, when would we expect to see you back in kind of showing us what's happening and what the timelines are on this thing. Yeah, well, as I've, as I've said from day one, I'm, I'm happy to have conversations whenever there's news to share that's not already out in the public domain. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, whenever there's an opportunity or an interest or a desire, I'm, I'm happy to come have those conversations with whoever wants to have You're them. You're invited back to use uh, Greater Somerville for your, your soapbox anytime Great. you want. Great. Anytime you want. Great. Let's stop. Uh, uh, let's, all of that stuff is your bailiwick, John. Let me go back to one of the questions that was asked of me is the relocation of Leechmere. Mm -hmm. That will take, you, you will start your build of the new station before you shut down the old. That's right. I, I would assume that's the way it's going to work. Does the, the um, relocation of Leechmere in Cambridge, does that preclude you from doing any other work further up the line? Say, for instance, the Union Square stop or Ball Square or Lowell Street or Tufts University? you could be working on those stations concurrently. Yeah, absolutely. And we anticipate there will be um, multiple work fronts going on concurrently. Um, ultimately, you know, we have designed the contract documents to give the design build team as much flexibility as they need. Because again, you know, they're gonna wanna approach us the most efficiently 
as they can. And the more, the more we dictate where they can work, when they can work, <clears throat> uh, when they can't work, the more it affects their price. And that, a lot of it is going to be negotiated between you and the municipalities. Depending yeah. on where those stations are, depending on traffic, public safety, all of that stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's correct. But as, again, as much as we can kind of keep that, those determinations with the design build team, mm -hmm. the better it will be for the overall program. Okay. Okay. So, so the other question that one of the, it, a resident called me this morning and was overjoyed that you know the news about the Green Line was front page Boston Globe above the fold, as they say. So it was big news. One of the things they asked me about was um, make sure you ask Mr. Dalton what he thinks realistically is the end date for opening the stations. Well, I'm, I mean, I was, I would, I, normally, John, I wouldn't put you on a spot like that. That's a fair I, question. That's a great question. Yeah. I mean, if, you're, if you're a future rider of the Green Line Extension, you want to know that. And I, that's a great question to ask, and I'm happy to, to give an answer to it. I mean, our, our, our schedule right now assumes the design build contract is awarded um, in February of next year. <clears throat> um, and we look to have revenue service, as we say, kind of the, tr the day when trains will be fully available for, for the, the riding public at the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. So um, I would respond to that resident, December 2021. So 2021, I... it has not moved since Secretary Pollock put the brakes on this. That 2021 was the date. So you think we're going to be able to make up the uh, the lag time there? I do, I do, and a lot of it, the fact that we've the scope has been changed, um, you know, we find some schedule efficiencies by doing that. Right. So, yeah. Right. Terrific. Anything else you want to tell us about being the most famous man in Somerville today? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I appreciate that. I'm not sure that's really really warranted, but I'm, I really find myself very fortunate to be here. I think this is a great opportunity to be a part of. Um, I think GLX is is in a great place. Um, I think yesterday's news was, was a huge step forward. Um, it's a great project. It's had, it's had some history that you know, we all know about, but you know, looking forward, it's, 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 it's nothing but good stuff. That's terrific. So I'll tell you what, John, use, use SCAT TV, Greatest Somerville, anytime you want to reach out to the masses. The other thing is, if you meet that end of 2021, I'll make sure you have a bronze statue at least one of the stations. <laughs> Great. Terrific. Great. Thank you, John. Joe, thank you. Thanks very much. My guest has been John Dalton, the general manager for the GLX extension of the Green Line. As always, stay safe, stay informed. See you next time.